Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. Photographer Brittany Sensabaugh is on a mission to give a voice to people who are overlooked or who are negatively portrayed by the media. In her acclaimed photo series, 222 Forgotten Cities, she does just that, shedding new light on often marginalized communities of color. And her new book, The Power of Melanin, is available now. Today, we'll discuss her mission and her photographs. Welcome. Love and light. So tell me about the incident that inspired you to do 222 Forgotten Cities. Okay, so I was on the A train um, in 2013, and I was wearing my favorite Oakland hoodie that I always wore at this time, um, because to me, um, I was representing a place that was that I was from that was so negatively talked about. Um, and I was sitting down and there was this elderly um, Caucasian lady um, that stopped me and looked at my hoodie and pointed to it and said, are you from that place? And um, I said, yes, I am. And then she went on to say that inside of this place, there was nothing but thugs and criminals and people that basically do everything in the book that's bad, that live there. Um, and she went on and on and I remember stopping her before I was about to get off the train and you know, I said, I'm from there and I'm none of those things. And I know a lot of people that are from there are none of those things right. as well. Um, and so I remember just being very, you know, frustrated because I can tell that everything that she was spewing out was something that she had learned or saw from the media. And also it's a perception that many non-persons of color have. Yes. I mean, our president, you know, during his campaign, uh, appealing to black voters, uh, he's describing black communities as ghettos, war zones, you're living in your poverty, your schools are no good, you have no jobs, 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose basically by voting for me? So it's a, uh, a characterization mm -hmm. of black neighborhoods that is prevalent. Yes. Um, so what did you want to do with the photographic project? So my mission behind it was to show um, the Oakland that, that I know. see every day, the Oakland that I was raised in. And although there are aspects about it that, you know, the media, you know, right and wrong is subjective, but that um, from their perspective that they feel is valid, there's a reason why these things are happening. And I wanted to show the reason why in my photography, why these things are happening. I also wanted to show the love, um, the unconditional love that gets overlooked every day intentionally in these areas. I wanted to show that, um, you know, the fact that we are always looked at as savages, when in reality we are royalty and we're beautiful people. So you, did you start with Oakland? I did, that was my first city that I've documented. Okay, yeah. and what other cities have you done? Um, so I started off with Oakland and then I came back to New York and I did um, part, different parts of New York. My favorite part that, I've, that I documented was Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, and I chose Browns, Brownsville, Brooklyn because it reminded me so much of Oakland, but also I wanted to um, document the cities that was considered the most dangerous or that had the highest crime rate. And Brownsville, Brooklyn, if you put it in side of Google, the first thing that pops up is the crime rate. Okay. Um, okay. After that, um, I went and I did Philly. After Philly, I did Baltimore. After Baltimore, I did um, Chicago. After Chicago, I did Houston. After Houston, I did West Los Angeles. After West Los Angeles, um, I did New Orleans. After New Orleans, I did Detroit. After Detroit, I did Kingston, Jamaica. You've covered a lot of territory. Yeah, I've covered a lot of territory. Okay. <laughs> so the PBS NewsHour website mm -hmm. said your photos capture, quote, well, both the beauty and the struggle mm -hmm. of the everyday lives of residents in places the media describes as only crime written. So let's talk about some of the aspects mm -hmm. of these communities that tend to be overlooked mm -hmm. by the larger society. And you, you talked about the love mm -hmm. that's there. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, it's a lot of love there. 
um, we are love. Um, and I think because in, you know, when you live in destructive conditions, when you live in areas that lack resources and outlets, when you live in areas that have food deserts, there's certain things that take place. Um, but let's talk about, we'll talk about the bad things, but let's talk right, about the good things. Right. The, the lovingness of these communities. You know, I think number one is that we, you know, as a people, like, we're so soulful, we're so vibrant. Um, and when I look at us, I, there's literally no one on this earth that's like this. No one has the vibrations that we have. So I feel like that, you know, when I was, for example, when I was in Houston, and I remember like walking through um, Third Ward, and I remember just the, just the love of like, someone would come out the house and need something like, I don't know, sugar or something for, um, something that they were eating and just the the unity mm -hmm. from house to house like literally like do you have this and the other person will go yeah like go in the house and get it it's just stuff like that that I feel like that is you know overlooked on a day-to-day -day basis right and it just the tone of how we are in our communities like um what is uncomfortable is the conditions, but us as a people, like, you know, we do get along. Right, and there's a know? certain warmth like, that you find yes, that you it's may a, not find in other communities. Yes. I think beauty was another thing that you found. Yes, I definitely found beauty. Um, I was able to show, like, the inner in people that I feel like that we are afraid to show because we get um, stereotyped a lot of the time. So I was able to um, have this transparency with our people. And I feel like they definitely, you know, gravitated to that because it was something that I feel like a lot of people don't do when they go in these areas because the perception of it is that, you know, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So don't but connect. Not, but not just only the inner beauty, but the outer beauty. Yes, the outer beauty. You, you know, like um, just the fact of just being able to acknowledge our existence and coming in and just like really like um, being able to just be in a space where you do acknowledge like that we exist. You know, like, the first thing when I come in and I see our people, I always, like, make sure that I say, like, I love your hair. Mm -hmm. You know, because these are things that inside of society that we are talked down about. Right. So any way right. that I can uplift us in any conversation and any way that I can build us up, I do. You took pictures of lots of children. I did. Who I you tend them. to shoot from mm -hmm. above. Mm -hmm. um, what do their images show about life in these communities? Um, Other than that they're... Right. <laughs> Precious. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, to me, when I look, when I shoot in that angle, because I'm shooting like this, but they're looking up at me, it's a sense of accountability that I am taking. I feel very accountable for them um, in many ways, which is why like, I put out this book, which is why I'm even documenting, because I consider my documentation archives, so they're going to outlive me for generations to come. So this imagery is something that generations to come can see, you mm -hmm. know, inside of schools, outside of schools, inside of houses, any of our places that we are able to be affected psychologically. Um, kids daily are affected in so many different ways. And I want it to be an energy that uplifted them to see themselves um, purely. But you said at one point you wanted to see yourself reflected in their eyes. Yes, as exactly, mentors, yes. You know? oh. So some of the, so those are some of the positive things that you, your picture, that you tried to capture. Right. Some of the unhealthy things you talk about, um, the prevalence of unhealthy food, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of liquor stores, uh, tobacco. In fact, you had a photograph of a, a maybe a five-year-old girl pretending to smoke a cigarette. Yes. Um, the beauty supply stores that sell chemicals mm -hmm. that kill black hair, mm -hmm. and physical decay, of course. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine some pain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And a sense of being trapped. You yes. talked about, tell me about that. Um, I feel like, you know, we're bombarded 
every day with these things. When you are literally walking in your neighborhood um, and you're not seeing things that promote healthy food, you're not seeing things and you're not being exposed to things that are promoting up something that are uplifting your vibrations, like your vibrations are not gonna be uplifted. You know, if you're walking and you're seeing beauty supplies, um, stores that are promoting chemicals that kills your hair, when you're seeing McDonald's and Popeyes and other food establishments that are, you know, not uplifting your vibrations and that are not healthy. Um, when you're seeing, you know, just, just the lack of resources that we have, like, you know, we're not able to really be in an uplifting state because of what we're putting inside of our body. And then also just like a lot of the um, destruction and a lot of the different conditions that are around us, you know. But also a sense of not being able to get out of there. Get, get out of there, them. that's another, yeah, that's a, you know, I feel like in many ways we are trapped in our trauma. You know, it is very traumatizing. We deal with a lot of trauma, we have a lot of triggers. So, um, you know, when we're stacked up 20 deep in housing projects um, that look like jails, color, gates, bars everywhere, you know, like these are things that psychologically that we are affected mm -hmm. by. So we're Did you ever trapped. feel, now you grew up in East Oakland. I did, yeah. Did you ever feel trapped there? Um, you know, I realized that, you know, when feeling trapped, it definitely is a mental thing. So I feel like in, in you know, as a little girl, like, no, not necessarily trapped. Okay. I didn't feel trapped. Um, but I did see, like, I feel like a lot of my people not be able to, um, the beauty the, of, of it was, the, was their existence, but not being able to bloom in the way that I feel like we can bloom right. is because of the outside resources that we have inside of our community. We're gonna have to take a short break, then we'll be back with photographer Brittany Sensabaugh after this message. Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy, and I'm talking with photographer Brittany Sensabaugh. Um, have the, photog have the photographs in 222 Forgotten Cities been exhibited? Yes, they have. Okay. Well, I had my first um, exhibit, my first solo exhibit at this gallery called Betty Ono in Oakland. Um, and then I had another one at this gallery called Image Gallery in Brooklyn. Okay. And yeah. what, what was the reaction? What's been the reaction? Um, you know, it was a lot of love. I got a lot of love when I came back home. I got a lot of love in New York as well. But when I came back home, it was like my homecoming because um, I lived in New York for six years, so. Um, but I feel like it was a lot of what people wanted to see. It was like um, a yearning for it. So I was very, very appreciative of that. Um, you know, I think what a lot of people, when they look at a lot of my photographs, it's very relatable, so, you know, a lot of them feel like, yo, this is like my auntie, this is my cousin, this is like from the hairstyles, this is something that, you know, I've grew up on. So it's a very like familiar like right. energy. This is something we um, see that right. people out there don't see. Right. So you came to New York City to be a fashion photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, what changed that? Um, so when I came to New York City, I wanted to do fashion photography. And what I loved most about fashion photography um, was the, expression aspect about it. Um, but as I started to go on and document, I feel like it started to lack substance because it was starting to be more about the garment and not necessarily the story behind the person wearing the garment. And ever since I was a little girl, I've always been attracted to storytelling and um, just being able to hear exactly what the root of something is so it's like what's the root like why are you wearing this garment you know like did your mom dress like this did you know like was it a song you know like what exactly is the root i'm always looking at the root of everything especially at this point um, of my journey but i wasn't really getting any root when doing fashion photography which is more about 
you know, it's Gucci or it's Louis Vuitton. It was like a lot of name brands, but it wasn't really like the, um, the not just pure, but the, um, the individual, mm -hmm. the identity mm -hmm. behind it, I right. feel like was like lacking. So. Although on Project Runway, uh, every uh, the designers are supposed to tell what the story is. Right, the right, but, right. But you, you're not you're not seeing that. You're seeing right. the model. You, right, right. You're seeing the story behind exactly, the model. Exactly. Exactly. Your series seems quite relevant at a time when there's a national debate over whether Black Lives Matter. That is, whether black lives have value. Right. And your pictures uh, seem to answer that by saying, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> they matter. Very much so. Um, um, so, and now you have your book, The Power yes. of Melanin. Is this self-published? Yes, so, so it's okay. my first self-published book under my own media company called 222 Media. Okay, Yeah. okay. And where does the 222 come from? So in 2007, my brother gave me my first Kodak camera when I graduated high school. Um, and in two years after that, he died in his sleep at the age of 28. And two years after that is when I moved to New York to pursue my photography career. Okay. Um, okay. I also studied numerology and like two is like my life number. Um, I always have saw two. I see two even more now. So it's like, yeah, two okay. just works. <laughs> now, this book, The Power of Melanin, yes, power um, of melanin. contains these, and I, we have to say, explain that melanin is this chemical mm -hmm. that is in humans, uh -huh. plants, uh -huh. animals, and it tends to give a darker hue mm -hmm. to, well, in humans, certainly, to skin, to uh, eyes, to hair. Right. And... Uh, uh, black people also say, you know, well, you know, that's one reason we age yes, better. Yes, it is. More slowly because yes. of the melanin mm -hmm. in our skin. Right. Um, so the book contains, it concentrates on hair. Yes. Um, photographs of black men, women, children wearing their hair naturally. Right. Uh, unstraightened, unprocessed. Right. Why did you focus on the hair? Well, it's, that's one aspect of the book. So there's three aspects. The hair is one aspect of the book. You know, I wanted us, because our hair is our solar source, it's our crown. So I wanted to um, focus on that because, you know, it's the, it's pure, you know, it's, it's natural, it's us. Um, and it's us in our purest form. Um, but the other aspect of it is that, you know, I wanted us to be connected or in the mentality to show that we are nature you know, and to look at us in that mentality and not as, you know, the savages and the negative imagery that, or the, you know, the negative stereotype that we are um, often, you know, looked looked at. And a lot um, of the pictures you juxtapose a certain hairstyle. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, it's hairstyle and then you show a bunch of bananas. And right. the hairstyle really sort of looks right. like the banana. It, right, exactly. <laughs> so it shows that literally we are nature. Um, but with that too, the next conversation that I wanted to introduce is healthy eating. So it's a lot of different conversations. Um, aside from that, there's positive affirmations that I feel like I want us to read to ourselves daily on days where we feel defeated and on days okay. where we feel like we're not able to um, get anything that's uplifting in our realm. Um, so there's fruit, but no fried chicken in the book. Yes. Okay. No fried chicken. <laughs> you, live, you live in, well, I, I thought you, you did live in New York City. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, but you moved back to Oakland and yes. you're taking these extraordinary photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, I mean, uh, and I know a lot of writers, journalists, you know, artistic types. Right. How do you make a living off of these? Do you make a living off of them? Um, so I always say I love for a living. So with that being said, um, I'm always going to be able to make a living because I give a lot of love, you know, like my photos are love. My whole existence is love. You know, I push that and I push that unconditionally. Um, so literally it's, I always make a way, okay. you know, like, um, but you know, yes, I do like. Are you so, getting financial so, support for? Yes, I do get financial support, you know, but photograph. more so like, yeah, I do get financial support, but more so like when I even speak about financial like stability or like money, like I always, you know, 
talk about energy and that's in the book. I always say that money is fake and energy is real. Mm -hmm. So as long as, you know, we um, be aware of the energy that we are um, consuming, be aware of the energy that we are giving up, giving out, um, we're going to always be able to figure it out, you know, like financially, like that's just, how can I say, it's a means, you know, so I look at it as that. I look at it as if like if I am um, making sure like eternally that I'm good, I'm healing myself, you know, these are things that matter. You talk about healing. Mm -hmm. A lot. Uh, I talk about that, healing that, a lot. That was one thing that you wanted to, mm -hmm. these photographs, to do. Mm -hmm. So are the photographs, when you look at what you want to be the end result of these photographs, is it for the white woman on the train, or is it for the black women who live in these communities, or is it both? It is for my people to be healed at the root psychologically because we have been under a lot of we are under a lot of generational struggle um it is you know like i said these are archives so they're going to outlive me um so i'm very intentional about um the way that i document um because i know that psychologically it is going to have an effect on us and i want it to psychologically have an effect on us to uplift us to nourish us i feel like we are lacking nourishment we are lacking unconditional love and most importantly we're we're um, lacking looking at ourselves at the root what the power of melanin is is looking at ourselves literally at the root so it's not really one narrative mm -hmm. but the narrative you know if you were to ask me, is literally upliftment. I'm going to ask you to read from uh, the back page okay. of the book. I love this. I yeah. Found. Thank you. Um, yes, I wrote this um, maybe like yeah, it was three years ago. And I was documenting in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and there was these two little empresses and they had like big Afro puffs. And I remember, um, you know, I remember th them looking just so full of life, but I remember like within them, like they felt so full of life, but I remember them being looked at like their hair was just so something that mm -hmm. was like in an exhibit, okay. you know? So, um, so read this for us. Yeah. Every root of your hair tells a different story. Do not be fooled by fools that will tell you otherwise. It grows out like a bush because you are a reflection of the sun. It dances around because your melanin has soul and like gold, it will continue to shine. There is no way to duplicate it, which makes you one of a kind. Remain pure and continue to embrace it. Always wear your crown of history proudly because no one can erase it. Lovely. Thank you. Your pictures, I mean, in addition to being beautiful and so interesting, I think serve a worthwhile purpose, as you said, of showing that black lives matter. Yes. Because, and that they are as complex as any other lives. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you're going to keep documenting them. Thank you. A whole lot of other cities you need to document. <laughs> We're out of time. I want to thank Brittany Sensabaugh for joining me today. For more thank information you. on Brittany and her work, visit her website, BritSense.com. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy. If there are any people you'd like to hear from or topics you'd like us to explore, please let us know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.